Hi guys, so I'm here today to do my end of month wrap up for the month of July. I'm actually splitting this into two parts this month because I read 10 things and I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long so I'd rather you hear a little bit more about each book and have two slightly shorter videos but I've kind of divided them by genre somewhat and this one, part one, is going to be all of the novels and poetry I read this month which is four novels and one book of poetry part two will be the two non-fiction books I read and the three graphic illustrated works I read but let's get into these books shall we I'm going to go from my least favourite to my favourite there was one book that did stand out this month as a definite unfavourite dislike did not enjoy it and that is Perfect Days by Rafael Montes, which is a shame because I was quite looking forward to this one. I buddy read it with Lauren from Lauren in the Books and I think we had similar feelings in general so um, neither of us really enjoyed it, which is a shame because I know other people do enjoy it. I know Joss from Scribble Reads thought it was like a good fun read and in a way it is. It's not a badly written book, do not get me wrong and it's an easy book to read generally speaking although there's quite some horrific and gruesome scenes in it it flows and I, I sped through it that's kind of what it's got going for it the plot however it's about a young man who becomes obsessed with a young woman and after he begins stalking her he ends up kidnapping her so he can make her fall in love with him which sounds like an interesting premise not a new premise but one that I do enjoy reading about and I'm intrigued to see authors do in their own way. Unfortunately, this was not done in its own way. It was full of tropes and at points verged on plagiarism. And when I say tropes and plagiarism, I specifically have in mind John Fowles' The Collector, which is a bit of a classic stalker story about a man again who becomes obsessed with a young woman and kidnaps her. And this was written in the 1960s, I believe. There were literally scenes and paragraphs in this novel which felt like they'd been extracted from John Fowles the Collector. Very specific actions and plot points, even small ones, that occurred in this story happened in the Collector just a few decades before, so in a different time period slightly. And not only that, the characterisation of the female victim was almost identical. It was just a bit weird that I felt like it was the same character almost. So many similarities. In terms of tropes, one of the ones that annoyed me right from the beginning was the fact that the main character was an only child with a single parent who he had to take care of because she was paraplegic, so he was the caregiver to his mother, which is such a kind of psychopath trope I feel in television and books. Uh, just generally, I can't say I enjoyed it because of that. It was just, sorry, it was just incredibly unoriginal. And then there was the ending, which was just stupid. I'm sorry, I didn't like the ending. You know, I can take bad endings. I don't need things to happen happily. Um, I don't need characters to get their comeuppance in stories, but it was just a bad ending. And I'm sorry, I really didn't like this book. <laughs> the more I think about it, the more it annoys me. Um, anyway. Let's move on. I didn't dislike anything else this month. The next two books I read I gave three stars and the first one is Sherlock Holmes' The Ripper Legacy by David Stewart Davies. This is part of Titans, the Further Adventures of Sherlock Holmes series which uh, adds new Sherlock Holmes mysteries or retells original Sherlock Holmes mysteries written by new authors which is always fun if like me you're a big Sherlock Holmes fan and are always happy to have a new Holmes mystery even if it's not quite the original. Now I'm pretty certain I will never give a new Sherlock Holmes mystery a five stars so in fact this one kind of got the second best rating it could get if that makes sense. What bugged me about this and what knocked off a star was that unlike a real Sherlock Holmes story there were moments where we got different perspectives other than the writings of Dr Watson. So on occasion we actually got glimpses into the criminals and the victims of the crime's circumstances and conversations and because of that there was some really blatant clues and revelations for the reader to easily guess whilst they were reading it, which meant we almost knew things before Sherlock Holmes told us or told Dr Watson, which I don't like. I really like the sense of unsolvable mysteries of Sherlock Holmes novels, whereas this, I, I, I knew who the criminal was and what had happened before the end, and I like that big 
revelation at the end of what's actually been going on the whole story. But I do like David Stewart's Davies writing about Sherlock Holmes. I think his characterisation's pretty spot on. Um, I enjoy his prose and I think if you are a big Sherlock Holmes fan and just want some new mysteries, which you can kind of take with a pinch of salt, then I would recommend this series. If you haven't read Sherlock Holmes though, then I, I don't understand why you would want to read these. Read the originals. <laughs> the mystery itself though, which I didn't mention, sorry, uh, follows a missing child. And like the title implies, there seems to be some connection with the Whitechapel murders that happened a decade previously. The next book I gave three stars was The Feminine Gospels by Carolyn Duffy, which is the collection of poetry I mentioned. I am going to say much about it here because I've got a video coming up with me discussing that collection and Take It As A Compliment, the graphic novel, which were both the reads for the Feminist Orchestra Book Club in July. All I'll say here is I, I generally enjoy Caroline Duffy's poetry. There were a few in this collection that I really enjoyed, but overall it just didn't really tug at any of my emotions or make me think about things in a new way or in a deeper way than usual. So generally it wasn't really an inspiring collection for me personally. I still think they were good poems and I think what you'll get from it is to do with the subjectivity of poetry and you as a person and I know some people who read it loved it, gave it 5 out of 5 stars. On to the two 4 star books here. Now I've actually written reviews for both of these on my blog so I'll link them down below if you want to read them but quickly let's go over them here. The first one is Foxo by Eleanor Wassenberg. This is the story of a commune or what kind of has become a cult which our protagonist Green has grown up in her entire life and we start with her maybe around four years old and we follow her through major events in her life and the life of the commune and it's very sad and forlorn feeling. Mainly how I felt was reading it but I also really enjoyed it. It's another one that's a very quick easy read and I don't mean that to say because it's not an impressive feat of writing, it's just written in a way that's just very easy to fly through and I think that's because it is from a child narrator and even when she grows up she's still quite immature. There is some interesting aspects of the writing though because of Green's strange upbringing, her sense of language and the way she talks about things is a little bit different which was really interesting and overall I just found it a very engaging read. There are still some plot points which I wish I had answers for but because it is narrated from the perspective of Green we don't learn anything that Green doesn't learn. Uh, so I don't think that was a failure in the book, it was just me like I want more and I, I did really enjoy this, it's uh, the author's debut novel and I'll definitely be checking out more of her stuff in the future. For the next book not only have I reviewed on my blog, I've also done a separate video talking about alongside two other books and that is Bodies of Water by V. H. Leslie. Now I would have read this book in one sitting uh, if I hadn't had other stuff to do and I did read it in two sittings which is quite quick for me. This is a story told from two perspectives, one in the 1800s, one in the 21st century but both characters are actually living in the same building just after it's been converted almost 200 years later in the, in the second instance. In our 1800s based tale. The building is a water treatment facility for women who suffer from hysteria. And this was quite a creepy little book. Um, it's about kind of the past seeping into the future almost like water. Women's relationship with the water and the Thames which the building is situated next to. Medical and sexual abuse of women. It does discuss prostitution in the 1800s and like I said hysteria which was obviously a really terrible medical diagnosis and treatment with no basis. And it is very short so it's definitely quite a fast paced creepy read like I said before. I feel like creepy sums it up but creepy in a good way. Another debut novel and another author who I'll definitely be checking out what they do in the future. Those are all the novels and poetry I read this month. I should be putting up a part two of this wrap up tomorrow if you're interested in the non-fiction and graphic works so stay tuned for that. But until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye! Hi guys! So I'm here today to share with you my current top five poets. 